Well, Chinese authorities have developed a new surveillance tool. It's called the gate recognition. It's a software that can identify people using their body shapes and how they walk, even if your face is hidden from a camera. This is already, in fact, being used by police in China, and it's raising a lot of concerns about how far this technology will go and how deep will this deep brother uh, the thing go in the country. Joining me now to discuss Wall Street Journal, Jillian Melcher, Danielle DiMartino Booth is back with us as well. All right, so this, they, they've got a lot of different pro programs in place, but another thing they have is called the social credit system, mm -hmm. and uh, it doesn't allow you to be a bad citizen. It's going to go into place in 2020, but already I've read that they've generated 7 million punishments. So th this, is, this is sort of the scary stuff. We, it, we've read about it for a long time, but it's coming into existence. Yeah, I think this is new totalitarianism. And we've got to put this in a historical context. I mean, you can imagine what this kind of technology would be used under a Lenin or a Mao. Um, unfortunately, the trajectory of human rights and freedom in China is going the wrong way. We've seen Xi Jinping in many ways take a pl uh, plays out of Mao's playbook. Um, so I think this is incredibly disturbing, and it's a time for American leadership. If we're, we're not concerned about human rights and freedom, I, I think the trajectory is going the wrong way. You know, Danielle, the system would rate trustworthiness. So there's citizens. Imagine as Chinese citizens, uh, and it's a wide variety of factors, what you buy, how you spend your time. Uh, if you jaywalk, if you smoke on a train, if you criticize the government, uh, even a family of friends. I mean, this is... Oh, the, it, it's going to track what apps you're on on your phone. It, it, it is big brother writ large, and if you think about the steps that Venezuela, Russia, and China are taking to implement their own cryptocurrencies, by 2020, I suspect, they will be able to track their citizens' every economic move. I mean, the, the, the disparagement of economic freedom, of personal liberty, I mean, just when you think that China is so so strong and it clamps down so much. If there's an economic slowdown coming, they're going to have to maintain social order. And if they're using this technology to do it, it scares me even more. And of course, there's a big, a bigger macro battle between uh, democracies and, and totalitarianism, which is gaining popularity around the world. People, some countries are actually voting this in, uh, you know, democratically. Yeah, I mean, I, I, again, I'll come back to the point. I think this is why American leadership is so important. Um, we're seeing this in China be ruled out, particularly with religious minorities um, in Xinjiang province targeting the Muslims there, the Uyghur Muslims. We're seeing this used against Christians in many cases. And I think this is an opportunity for the U.S. to show leadership what on this. What can we do to, 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 to slow it down, to curb it? I mean, what... what what could we do as a, as a, as a nation? Well, I mean, I, I think the Trump administration has had some success with sanctions. But I think bringing this up, um, saying the names of people who are being persecuted, bringing up dissidents, making this an issue along with trade, with, along with our economic success, because this is something that really matters. I, sure. you know, I think free countries are more likely to be peaceful countries. Yeah, I, you know, listen, I, I think as we're in the middle of this trade war, this should be a key consideration, and not, you know, not just opening your markets, but making sure you don't arrest a million people because they're Muslims and put them in these concentration camps, uh, you know, uh, because I don't know that we really want to do business with a country like that. Of course we don't want to do business with a, with, with a country like that. But if you saw the latest trade deficit figures, China's 55 percent of the trade deficit, that's the biggest portion ever on record. So to me, it's, it's going to make both sides in the trade war battle dig their heels in ahead of the G20 at the end of the month. And we already know that China is reeling that its manufacturing sectors at the slow at the lowest level since 2011. I get worried when their economy slows because it makes their leadership more desperate to yeah. control their people. You agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. For a long time, China's had kind of a pact with its people. We give you economic success and you give us your freedom instead, your political freedom. And I think that, you know, when the Chinese economy is struggling, that's when you really see uh, Beijing getting paired. That's when the Faustian deal comes home to, to roost. To, yeah, so to speak, it really right? is. Yeah. Scary stuff. Uh, uh, you, you study the Fed, you study mm -hmm. monetary policy and, and the trends. How, how do we adjust for this? Uh, particularly if they have this sort of, it's already Potemkin cities, right? Ghost cities, towns. I mean, it's, there's already so much, so many lies in the data they put out to the rest of the world. But if right. they're actually cr beating down on their people, they're actually, you know, uh, you know, taking away their freedoms and rights, how could you ever accurately measure their economy? 
It's very difficult to do. I mean, there are some analysts who are on the ground who come up with their own independent analyses that actually slow, that, that actually show how much the, the economy is slowing right now. And the Chinese, uh, the, the Chinese uh, leadership has been hoping for years now that they would be able to move, segue towards, ironically, a more American type of economy, domestic-led consumption. Sure, sure. And if they can't turn that corner while manufacturing is slowing, again, my greatest concern is that they're going to use their currency as one of their last remaining pieces of ammunition. They can't right. go after our treasuries. Right. Right. They would lose billions of dollars. Uh, real quick, Julian, before we go, uh, any signs you think that someday we may have to grapple with these issues too? I, I believe mm -hmm. at some point we may, maybe not to this degree, but it's a technology that looks would look enticing to a lot of people. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we're all creeped out a little bit about what Facebook and Google can do. But the really important thing to keep in mind is the U.S. needs to have a presence on the world stage because this isn't just China. Beijing is going to export right. this technology. Right. Ladies, thank you both very much. Thank Julian, you. Danielle, great conversation. Thank you.